All right, here we're going to look at valuing the European call option by Monte Carlo. Uh, what we're going to do here, we know the, the solution already. Black Scholes gives us the, the solution. So the nice thing about this is uh, you can practice Monte Carlo and you know uh, you can check your answer. You can check the, your answer with Black Scholes to, to make sure that your answer is correct. Um, good. So, and this will give you a little bit of uh, understanding of what goes into Black Scholes. So, um, if we, we're going to value the European call option by Monte Carlo, and like Black Scholes, we're going to assume the stock price follows a geometric Brownian motion. So, that assumption looks like this. So this is saying that the, the, the stock price changes in the stock uh, follow this stochastic differential equation. This is known as ge uh, geometric Brownian motion. Um, this is mu, the drift, uh, stock price at time t and for a very small change in time. Uh, and then this is our random component, the change in a Brownian motion. Uh, Brownian motion, um, a, uh, the, 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 the characteristics of Brownian motion we're going to use, of course, is uh, Brownian motion is at time uh, zero, uh, the Brownian motion is equal to zero. Uh, the, the difference, the Brownian motion at time t minus the Brownian motion at time s is distributed normally with a mean of zero and a variance of t minus s. So we're going to use that fact, uh, that uh, um, characteristic of Brownian motion. So here's a drift component and this is the random component of the stock prices. Now, the first thing we need to do if we are going to, to value an option uh, by by Monte Carlo is we need to know the distribution or, or how to express the stock price at time t. So in other words, what we need, what we're looking for first is, t, big T being the expiration of the option, is the stock price, the description of the stock price at time t. Keep in mind, because this is, an American op this is not an American option, we can't exercise early. So we don't particularly care about the path that, it, uh, the, that the stock takes. Uh, until time t, just what it is at time t. So, in other words, if we were to do a path-dependent option, like a um, American, Asian, these types of options, we would actually need to simulate, you know, paths. Um, uh, however, here we don't need to simulate the path. We just need the price at time t, stock price at time t. So the way we, so given this assumption, the way we can get uh, the stock price at time t is actually an application of Ito's lemma. Uh, so um, we'll go. Ito's lemma. Now, informally, I can write Ito's lemma uh, in such a way. So, say um, f is a function uh, of x sub t and t, so some stochastic process x t and t, then I can informally write uh, the change in f is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to t dt plus the partial derivative of f with respect to the stochastic process x t dxt plus one half uh, the partial the second derivative of xt uh, of f with respect to xt um, dxt dxt. So we can make use of this. Uh, um, we're going to make use of uh, Ito's lemma to to, uh, um, to 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 derive what the stock price at time t is. So in other words, what we can do is instead of um, f xt, let's take some function y. Is equal uh, uh, is a function of s t and t equal to l n s sub t. So assume that's my uh, function of the stochastic process. Uh, then we can find um, we can using Ito's lemma take the derivative of y here. Uh, now this is um, this is just a function of s t. So uh, this term is zero. And uh, note um, the, the derivative of y with respect to xt um, is just 1 over st. So in other words, the idea here is uh, partial f with respect to st is equal to 1 over st. Uh, and partial, the second derivative of f, uh, sorry, this is partial derivative of, you know, I renamed this y. Uh, partial derivative of y, y with respect to st uh, is equal to negative 1 over st squared. So, in other words, I can plug these in. This is going to be uh, 1 over st, and then uh, uh, dst here, of course. This is just a generic stochastic process, x team. Uh, now, assume that the underlying is, is geometric Brownian motion here. Um, ds sub t uh, minus 1 half uh, 1 over st squared, 
and then we have dst dst. Now what I can do is I can take this d the this and, and plug it into this equation here, uh, and what that's going to give me uh, this is equal to uh, so. I'll, I'll just rewrite it here. So what this is going to be equal to, I can plug dst in here, and this is going to be mu st dt plus sigma st dbt minus one half one over st squared, and then we have um, the product uh, of, of two of these. Now. What I'm going to make use of here, and what you definitely um, don't have to worry about, but if you want to go into to studying uh, the, the um, uh, you know, going a little bit deeper, you, you can prove these. But the idea here is that uh, dt times dt is equal to zero, dt times dbt is equal to zero, and dbt, dbt is equal to dt. So the idea is when I take the product here, the dt times the dt is zero. The dt times the dbt is zero. Of course, uh, you know this commutes. So um, bt times dt is equal to zero. So I'm just left with this last term here, uh, and this last term is going to be sigma squared st squared dt. So now what I can do, of course, is just cancel, 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 and this is going to equal. And now I'm going to sort of rearrange it while I'm doing this here, meaning put the dt's together. Uh, this is going to be equal to mu minus one half sigma squared dt plus sigma dbt. Good. So this gives us um, uh, so this gives us uh, the derivative of of, of this um, process. Now uh, what we can do? We can write this and say, okay, well. Um, and I, I'm going to get rid of this Edo's lemma up here. So now remember, uh, dy uh, is equal to um, uh, y is the ln s sub t. So then ln s sub t is equal to uh, mu minus one half sigma squared dt plus sigma dbt. So now the idea of this is I can integrate this from, from 0 to t. So I'll erase another line here. So taking the integral from 0 to big T, so big T being the uh, expiration of the option, uh, of ln s sub t, um, uh, d ln s sub t, is equal to uh, integral of some zero to big T mu minus one half sigma squared dt plus integral from zero to big T sigma big T sigma dbt. Fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, this is just going to equal um, ln s sub t minus ln s sub zero is equal to uh, this. Uh, uh, now the idea is this is going from zero to t big T, so this is just going to equal mu minus one half sigma squared big T, and again using the principle that at um, uh, at uh, zero, the B sub zero, the geometric Brownian motion is zero, uh, then this is going to be plus uh, sigma B T. We're almost there, We're, we almost have S sub T here. So now I can just, I'm going to move uh, ln s sub zero over to the other side, and then I'm going to raise both sides of the equation to um, by e, so e to, to to the power of each side of the equation, uh, and that's going to give me s sub t is equal to s sub zero e. Remember here, we're all using uh, e, of course, e ln s sub t is equal to s sub t, right? Um, uh, e being the antilog. So uh, this is going to be mu minus one half sigma squared t plus sigma bt. So this is what we want. Good. So that's sort of the, the theoretical um, process by which we get from I want to value a, uh, uh, an option on this stochastic process uh, to how to actually simulate the, stochastic, the, the, the ultimate stock price at time t. So now you know, switching to the practical, how do we actually simulate this thing? Uh, well, one, notice that in a complete market, we, we can replace this mu with r. 
So one of the things here is now when we're moving to a complete market valuation, we have R here. So this, this portion to simulate is, is, is easy. The, the only randomness comes in this B, uh, the Brownian motion at time T. So uh, the way you, to look at this is, uh, of course, uh, the Brownian motion at time T um, is distributed normally with a mean of zero and a variance T. Um, again, you, you, of course, you can see this by um, uh, just b sub t minus b sub zero um, is going to be distributed normally at t minus zero. So uh, we need to simulate this. Now the idea here is um, what we can do is simulate a normal random variable. So simulate a standard normal random variable and multiply it by the square root of big T. So in other words, to get to get b t b sub t, all we do is simulate a standard normal random variable and multiply it by the square root of t. Remembering, I might do part. I might do the actual implementation of this in Excel and in R, um, and, and post into a uh, you know a separate sort of screencast thing. Um, but to do this, all you need to use in, is uh, you know in Excel, um, you can calculate a standard normal random variable by just saying n o r m s d i n no um, n o r m s i n v. I need the inverse um, s i n v, and then rand. So this will this will generate a uniform random, and this will um, take the inverse of it back to getting a, a standard normal random variable, uh, N O R M S I N B. I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, they work mostly in R now. Uh, but uh, so take this. So um, all we have to do to get uh, B sub big T and multiply this by the, the square root of T, and then we have we have this. Of course, then um, you know we we plug this in. Uh, what we'll what we'll do is simulate. The idea is, of course. You know, simulate 10,000, uh, 20,000, 100,000 of these, plug it in, and for every, you know, for every unique standard normal random variable here, you're going to get uh, a unique um, stock price at time t. So uh, then we're going to get, you know, so let's say we, we, we simulate 10,000 random numbers, um, we, we get 10,000 um, uh, stock prices at time t, then it's very simple. So from that point to actually just value the option via Monte Carlo, is for each stock price at time t, all we do is say, find the option payoff. So the option payoff is going to be the maximum of s sub t minus whatever strike price you use in zero. So simulate 10,000 random variables here. Simulate That's going to give you 10,000 um, stock prices at time t. That's going to give you 10,000 different payoffs. Uh, and then over all of these payoffs, simply take the average. And that's going to be what we expect the payoff on the option to be. So in other words, um, uh, take the you know t uh, calculate this for all ten thousand. Take the average of that. Uh, that's going to give you the average expected payoff, and then you simply discount it back to today. So in other words, um, you, what you want to do is something like you know the call option value today is going to be equal to e to the negative r t, and it's just going to be the average overall s of t. So um, you know maybe I'll just write it something like uh, you know mean of the maximum of uh, max s of t minus k and zero, right? So using a little bit of shorthand, you know, overall, you know, and this of, this of course over all s of t, and that gives you the um, that gives you the the call price today, call price at time zero, and again the way to check this is uh, if you've done it correctly, you are going to get. Um, uh, the, the same answer as Black Scholes. Now, keep in mind, if you only use 10,000 random variables, you're going to the Monte Carlo is going to have an error. It's going to be a little bit off. So, uh, what you should do is calculate the Black Scholes value, and then you know calculate um, the, the the value of the option by by Monte Carlo, and then use progressively uh, you know more and more random numbers. So, you know, uh, once you get up to like a million, it should be within a penny of Black Scholes. Uh, and in in later. Um, lectures I can talk about how to reduce the variance of your Monte Carlo estimate. But the idea is the Monte Carlo is going to be a little bit off. What you can do to check is in Excel, if you hit F9, it'll recalculate. So hit F9 a bunch of times and make sure that you know, you're getting values a little bit above uh, the black shield value and a little bit below. Um, and then definitely just try to throw in as many random variables as you can. Um, you know, Excel will lock up at some point, but try to throw in as, as many random variables as you can. And then you're going to see the Monte Carlo estimate um, 
get closer and closer to the Black Shoals, and you know, eventually it'll be within within a tenth of a penny, uh, consistently. Good. All right. So, uh, uh, and again, I might put out a screencast and showing you how to do this in Excel, and also how to do it in R. Um, in R, it's just one quick, you know, it's a one-liner, so it's nice. Good.